Remember how Path of Exile sneaked up on Diablo and over time established itself as the ARPG to play? Well, slow and steady might be the strategy to cost Diablo again, this time with a new challenger, Last Epoch. While waiting for all these to come out, I checked out the game and I gotta say, I won't be surprised if it becomes standard ARPG rotation for many players. Diablo 4 kind of positioned itself as this approachable mainstream ARPG, which anyone can just pick up and enjoy, but it also left a lot of players desiring a bit more. More builds, dungeons, bosses, content in general. Last Epoch, even though still in early access, fulfills a lot of those needs. The game strikes a perfect balance between too easy for an ARPG and too complex. So, I will look at this game from two perspectives. How casual friendly is it? And what systems Diablo 4 should steal from Last Epoch? To set the stage right away, I'm not a veteran player of ARPGs with incredible in-depth knowledge of all possible systems, so this overview will be through the lens of a casual ARPG enjoyer who played Diablo 4, PoE and now Last Epoch. It will also be a quick rundown of the game and its systems rather than in-depth analysis. So, first things first, the game graphics look good at the moment. It looks pretty much like PoE. But if we look at what PoE 2 and Diablo 4 are doing, Last Epoch will definitely need an update, otherwise it will seriously lag behind the two. Good thing graphics don't make the game, especially in this genre. The system in Last Epoch are easy to pick up, and the game gradually introduces you to each of them. Double layered skill system is introduced right as you reach your first levels. It consists of passive skill tree for the chosen class, and active for individual skills. The passive skill tree levels up with your character, and provides things like plus one to strength, increased health regen, modifier for dual wielding weapons and so on. The active skill tree is the list of all skills you can use. However, this becomes more interesting because you can specialize in five skills and develop them further. Each skill you specialize in has its own subtree that can alter the skill. Think of Sorcerer's skill enchantment, but deeper, or PoE Crucible League passive skill trees. Crafting is pretty straightforward with intuitive UI. You can change your gear's prefixes and suffixes, you can extract stats off of gear, transform it into higher tiers, etc. The list of features goes on with relics, idols, blessings, robust itemization with magic, rare, unique, set, exalted and legendary rarities, loot filters, leaderboards, arenas and dungeons. To round it up, I think Last Epoch is actually the gateway to ARPGs, as it's a pretty approachable game, but still gives enough complexity to tip you over into min-maxing world of this genre. As I played Last Epoch, I noticed a couple of quality of life features and system that I think would be nice to see in Diablo 4. First, target farming. Last Epoch offers a pretty cool way of target farming. As you reach the endgame and start mapping, or doing echoes as they are called here, you can actually see what each of these echoes offer. Mob modifiers, but more importantly, what kind of rewards you get for completing it. On top of that, you can kinda tailor your echoes quote-unquote atlas according to what you're looking for. Rare rings, swords, gold, relics, etc. This could nicely translate into Diablo 4 as improved nightmare sigil craft, so that we don't only get monster modifiers, but could also craft for example a rings cache that would be awarded upon completing the dungeon. Now that I think about it, Diablo 4 already has some form of this, with health hides and chests that spawn there. Crafting in Diablo 4 is pretty bare bones. Upgrade item 5 times, imprint aspect to make it legendary, extract aspect from it which destroys it, and replace an FX. On the other hand, Last Epoch brings this up a notch, but still keeps it reasonable. Add missing FXs, upgrade them to higher tiers, remove them, seal them so they can be messed with, reroll stats, transform items into different rarities, salvage items for FX shards, and probably a couple of more I did not yet encounter. I understand the reasoning behind Diablo 4 not having an overlay map, but for some reason it just doesn't accomplish what they say it should. Pulling out the entire map breaks my immersion way more than an overlay map would. Would be nice to see this, at least in dungeons. The whole backtracking issue Blizzard addressed a couple of times now seems to be a non-issue in Last Epoch, at least in maps. The way it's solved here is by having mandatory and optional objectives. Mandatory being kill the boss or destroy some points of interest, while optional being kill all the mobs. So rather than running around the map looking for that last mob, clearing out most mobs will reward you bonus rewards, while clearing out the primary objective will just mark the map as complete. Objective markers might be weird on its own, but if coupled with the previous one, it works pretty well. This is another quality of life feature Last Epoch uses to solve wandering around map mindlessly problem. Map objectives are marked on the map and there's an arrow pointing to them. As simple as that. While Diablo 4 has some sort of skill specialization, it still seems pretty basic when compared to how you can alter skills in other ARPGs. Picture Sorcerer's skill enchantment, but way deeper. Or more reasonable explanation, imagine each skill had its own skill tree. 
with these types of games revolving around progressing your character and making them stronger with better equipment, loot filters are pretty much mandatory. Having an in-game way to declutter the mess is a no-brainer. In-game loot filters with different parameters and switching between them is Last Epoch's way of handling it. Adding one stash tab as a season feature and blaming it on network slash code issues is a meme. And it looks like Last Epoch does not like memes because you can add many tabs and many categories. You can search them, sort them, name them, color them, and so on. Memeing on Blizzard and saying D4 bad seems to be the trend these days, but it actually makes me wonder, how do these smaller studios and indie devs keep beating AAA companies at their game?